welcome back to adiverate kids learning session and in the previous uh, session we discussed about the introduction on social skill development among children with lots of pressure on social bondings and social interactions the skill requirements among kids for social requirements or social needs have also been increasing gradually the social networking social requirements social institutions are keep on changing on a very rapid pace if we do not bring those changes in terms of skill building among kids then kids will some point of time will not be social effective the way the society is changing therefore in the preschool years it is very important for us to make sure that our child is learning adequate social skills and as we discussed in our previous introductory class that will be having three major skill based learning under social skills and five major learning or skill building headings under behavioral aspects so today we'll be taking the very fast skill building exercise under social skill and that is social cooperation so social cooperation is one of the major contributes or major aspect of social skill building process and today we are going to discuss in details how we can develop the social cooperation skill among children how we'll be measuring those skills among children and as teachers and preschool facilitator how we would be ensuring that our child has gained all the skills under social cooperation and how will be making sure that child's learning on those areas are continuous those things will be dealt with 12 skills under this so today's session we'll discuss 12 skills under social cooperation and how to measure it how to inculcate these skills in our children we'll discuss details on this so going further uh, i would like to bring this particular mechanism in into your consideration and into your attention so that whenever we bring the skill building process so these things are going to help us social skill when we try to build in our children we must keep it in mind the sensitivity age of the child the sensitivity age is very high between 2 years to 6 years and as you can see and we have already discussed those things so i am not going to discuss in details for this but just to reinforce our process of building those skills in the child we need to understand and if we look to the age of the child from 1 year till 6 year 7 years and also we look the effectiveness of the skill building among children will find a pattern this pattern shows that it gradually increases the moment child starts interacting with various social elements that could be the member of the family that could be the extended family that could be other aspects in the society so when child interacts with the social elements it goes on increasing by the time child reaches 3 or 4 years of age the skill building effectiveness becomes very very high and post that when the child develops the habitual ways of responding then the skill acquiring process would be there but the impact the effectiveness and the sensitivity of the skill gaining process would be little low therefore we would try to build those things very very carefully therefore we need some kind of mechanism we need some kind of technique so that we are aware and we are mindful that how we are building those skills in our children so we'll be discussing social cooperation in details 
So under social cooperation, we are having 12 skills and each of these skills is very, very important for us to build among our children and ensure that child develops those skills uh, very, very uh, systematically. So these 12 skills, while we'll develop and discuss these 12 skills, and each skill can be evaluated at each stage of child's skill building process. So under these checkpoints, what we need to do for each skill, there is a evaluation outcome and each outcome is related to a score. For example, if we are just talking about a particular skill out of the 12 skills, and while we evaluate our child for that particular skill, if we find child is never or child never behaves or child never displays that particular skill that then will be give a score of zero. This happens during our evaluation process. That's why we need to understand that before going to each skills specifically, we need to know how to evaluate. Then if some point of time, one skill we are trying to evaluate and in that particular skill child is showing, displaying that skill, but not very frequently, rarely, then we have to assign a score of one. And that particular skill is displayed sometimes. Then we assign a score of two. And when any skill that we are going to discuss today and any point of time we evaluate our child and find that child is displaying that particular skill very often, then we have to assign a score of three. So these are the, our scoring mechanism. We have to keep it in mind. So those scoring mechanism, we keep on discussing different times while we take you through this whole program so that it becomes very easy for all of you to remember and the evaluation and inculcation of these skills would be much easier. Now, this shows that once all the skills, all the 12 skills together will be put together and evaluated, then we'll just come to a conclusion about the social cooperation skill in our child. So if the score will be bigger, then the social cooperation skill, social effectiveness in our child will be much better. If the score is less, then the social effectiveness as far as social cooperation is concerned, then that is considered to be a bit low. And that's a good mechanism. Even if we understand the score is low, then we know that we need to intervene. We need to make some changes in our skill building process so that our child will be much more social effectiveness going further. Then now we'll be discussing those things uh, details. But one thing we must remember, we are having four classes. The child when between two to three years, child is in play group. When the child is in uh, three to four, then it's nursery, four to five LKG and five to six is UKG. And the scoring pattern as per the preschool and kindergarten uh, scoring mechanism for social skills, we have two categories. Number one category, we look to the pre-KG children, pre-kindergarten children. That means they are either ch ch children in the play group or children in the nursery. So both these nursery and play group children, we have combined them as one group. So all the evaluation we are going to do, that will be common for this pre KG segment. So whenever we'll be trying to do the evaluation and scoring mechanism, so this will be considered one as one group, pre KG group, including nursery as well as play group. And another group will be kindergarten group or KG group. So this includes LKG and UKG children. So we'll be having one set of evaluation for this pre KG children and another set of uh, evaluation for the KG children. So those things we must remember while we'll be discussing the tool, when we'll be discussing the details about the social cooperation. Now, if we considering the first evaluation group, that is our play group and nursery children together, which uh, are termed as pre-KG category, then under that, if we find, if we criteria considered to be significantly deficient in social functioning, why we are developing social skills so that our children would be social highly effective. 
if they are not effective then their social skills or their social functioning in the society would be some point of time will be deficient so that's why first criteria of the evaluation can be categorized as significant deficit in social functioning in case the score will be deriving out of this 12 skill evaluation if the score for the category 1 that is pre kg children varies between 0 to 15 then we may categorize them as significant deficit in social functioning that means their social skill development needs huge amount of improvement so we would be working very closely and very very uh, significantly with those children whose score are between 0 to 15 and same for the lkg and ukg group if the score is 0 to 19 then they will be categorized under significant deficit social function then second criteria second category based on the scoring system that we are going to do will be termed as moderate deficit in social functioning meaning their social skills are getting developed but there are also huge scope of further improvement and when this is going to happen if the score for the pre kg children meaning play group and nursery children are between 16 to 23 then we categorize those children as moderately deficient in social functioning and kg children meaning lkg and ukg children if their score varies from 20 to 24 then we'll categorize them as moderate deficient social functioning this is our second category going to the third criteria third category they are average social functioning means their social skill are adequate so in that case if the score for the pre kg children are between 24 to 33 then they are categorized under average social functioning meaning their skill has uh, been developed but still still scope is there so that we can improve the skills further and for the kg children if the score is between 25 to 34 in between of this range then they can be categorized under this criteria of average social functioning on the top high social functioning or highly social effective children whose score will be 34 to 36 for category 1 that is pre kg children and for kg children the score if falls between 35 to 36 they are categorized under highly social functioning skills so why we are talking about this score as we know we are measuring 12 skills under this and if we know that maximum score will be 3 minimum score will be 0 so 12 skills maximum skill 3 12 into 3 36 so our maximum score will be 36 and minimum score 12 into 0 will be 0 so 0 to 36 the score will vary while we will be evaluating a child for the social cooperation skills under social skill development so once the score varies between 0 to 36 then this is the category so from significant deficit social functioning to high social functioning you can see if the score falls any of this range then accordingly we can categorize our child and that helps us to take further action to work on our child where and which skill is uh, the child is missing and we can work on this particular skill so with this understanding now we will move to each skill one by one and we have to discuss how to evaluate them and how to further improve them so this sounds very uh, very very specific very very systematic so that we need not worry about uh, how we will be developing the social skill in our child because in most of the curriculum and syllabus in these years they don't speak very very specifically how we will be improving the social skill of our child so this technique particularly will give us a guideline give will give us some kind of approach that will be able to develop the social skill in a very systematic manner let's go ahead so number one skill that we are trying to measure and improve in our child under social cooperation skill improvement is the child is cooperative if we have to ensure in the preschool year the child is cooperative how and 
what are the methods through which we have to improve that so first thing we have to uh, discuss here is that how we develop this skill in the preschool as we have already discussed that uh, teddy bear kids has uh, brought its prime methodology in the prime methodology is the first module is the play module so we are not discussing play module in details but if you want to know how the play model can improve uh, the the whole uh, approach of teaching in the preschool uh, children then you can go to our module and just uh, how what is the play module and how they can improve the overall skills so if we initiate a play under play method and ensure that the child participates in that joyfully any game in any preschool uh, uh, environment if we initiate a functional play and we expect child participates in that that could be a dance that could be a play uh, play that could be a kind of uh, a turn around game so anything which is a functional game and any participate any game requires participation of the child if child without resistance comes and participates doesn't matter what is the role the child plays then that shows child is cooperative some point of time when we initiate various play in uh, preschools then we often come across there are children who are little bit of shy who are little bit of resistance to come and participate in any functional play that is being initiated by a teacher or by any preschool experts so that shows that shows the child is not cooperative and if we leave the child just like that without taking action to make the child cooperative by ensuring that something or we appreciate the child we make some intervention so that the child comes and participates then this cooperative social cooperation skill remains unsolved remains unattentive unattended for the child so as a teacher or preschool facilitator we have to ensure that any functional play child participates joyfully so we are ensuring teamwork and cooperation as a social skill so this is a must have skill in the in the child and parents also need to take a note that apart from school uh, efforts that we can also have such kind of skill develops in our uh, make sure that such uh, skills are getting developed in our child so that's very important and how do we evaluate this if we feel that child is never cooperative child doesn't come very uh, you know never comes and participates we have to give a score zero if the child rarely comes and participates we will give a score of 1 sometimes child bets based on the mood child comes and participates we give a score of 2 and always child is coming and participates then in that case we have to give a score of 3 so this is fast skill and uh, for the overall evaluation we have got a separate template separate uh, thing we'll uh, share that with you maybe those things will be uh, you can have it in your in your uh, uh, you know reference that reference will be provided to you or it is already available in the reference so you can have a look to this template how you are going to uh, evaluate for various skills so once this is understood we'll move to the next uh, second skill under the social cooperation and second skill talks about the child follows instructions from adults so if you look at the varied kids curriculum it is already uh, included in the syllabus following instructions to other of adults is one of the social skill and it is categorized under the social cooperation and how the preschool experts or preschool facilitator or, or preschool teachers how will have to ensure that things is happening under these two things we have to ensure while we are just uh, dealing with uh, a child for the development of this particular social skill we we'll have to initiate a play and ensure that the child follows all the instruction involved if you look uh, i divided kid syllabus very specifically it's given each child must be having a specific role to play in any kind of functional play that we initiate in a school environment or at a home environment if those instructions or the role is not clear then there will be a confusion in the child 
and if the confusion is not taken care of while we initiate a play then child will be having difficulties in future so as teachers we have to be very very careful defining the role of the child once the role of the child is defined we can give an instruction to a child and once the instruction is given to the child then we have to see whether this child is following those instructions or not if the child follows those instructions then the social skill of the child is very very strong if the child doesn't follow then social skill needs to be further improved but one condition here we must ensure that the role is clear or the communication that the instruction is completely understood by the child so with this condition we have to evaluate whether the child is following and we have already discussed how we have to take care of this particular skill in a preschool environment and once that is done and it's very easy because every day we are just having functional plays in the school and we have to take a note whether each and every child is given specific instructions and those instructions are rightly followed or not very easy now second thing we must uh, you know check with our parents uh, as uh, we at edivered kids are very very particularly saying that we must have month wise interaction with the parents so that parents can provide each and every feedback about the child's growth so every monthly meeting we can check with our parents just to ensure that whatever instructions the parents that give to the child for anything social regions or any region the child follows jolly well to all the instructions so once this is understood then it comes to the evaluation so evaluation can be done at any point of time during the, their preschool years so if the child is not following his instruction at all then we have to give zero if rarely it is followed then one sometimes the child follows will give two and all the times all the instructions that is given to the child is uh, followed or child follows that then we have to assign a score of 3 so this is the scoring for the second skill then we have to move to the to the third skill then third skill talking about the child shows self control this is a very very important social cooperation skill and most of the times in preschool we forget to inculcate this particular skill what does this particular skill and how we can inculcate this skill in the preschool children in the preschool environment is that now how much time if we want to develop this skill among children in the preschool environment then as teachers we must understand how much time does it take for a child to be normal if a negative emotion is there in the child very often it's very natural a child will be displaying some negative emotions that could be child will be very angry child will be sad child will be jealous child will be not listening at all so those kind of negative emotions are very common to occur in children we cannot help it but what is important as a social skill is coming out from that negative emotion very very quickly so that indicates the child is under self control child understand that and child comes back to the normal situation and those things if not taken care of very very consciously then the child will remain in that negative emotion for a longer time if the child remains in that negative emotion for a longer time then that becomes a habitual social skill for the child then it becomes very very difficult in the future just to teach the child to be mindful because the mindfulness has not been inculcated in the child when there were sensitivity period for the child and for the parents and teacher this is my humble request this is something we are often not able to give importance on this but all the research across the world because i am not taking all these things from my own thought but just i am taking all these things from some of the research that already been done that shows if we are not looking to this particular social skill under social cooperation then bringing mindfulness in the child in the future 
will be a herculean task but as long as the child is under the sensitivity period that means 2 to 6 years it becomes very very easy for us to work on this now for play group just ensure this negative emotion take the child to the normal situation should not take more than 10 minutes because in the in the beginning it may be difficult but it is very much doable and once the child is growing with this kind of mindfulness with the proper supervision of the parents and teachers then in nursery we should ensure child doesn't take more than 8 minutes or our effort should be that if the child is in negative situation then bringing back the child into normal situation should not take more than 8 minutes and lkg the time limit should should not be more than 6 minutes and for ukg children the time limit should not be 2 minutes if we achieve this believe me we are contributing huge huge amount of trust and confidence in the child's life child doesn't need to understand or learn the mindfulness going further when everybody in the stressful world is asking the you know children to learn mindfulness these things we can easily do in our preschool years please give it a uh, note for all the teachers and it is very very much doable thing in the preschool years then how we will have to evaluate if the child is not able to come to the normal situation that means child doesn't have self control we'll have to give zero if rarely we are able to bring back child into normal situation within the time span then we have to give evaluate the child one that shows that huge amount of scope is there for improvement sometimes the child is coming back to the normal situation or child shows self control we'll have to give two and if the child is often coming back to normal situation without much difficulty then we have to give three that means the social skill for the social cooperation is much much stronger this is very important i am just taking time here to reiterate this fact that this is a very important skill and we must we must give importance in our primary pre primary segment to ensure this skill is inculcated in our children then going for the next uh, uh, skill so next skill is uh the child uses free time in acceptable way this is fourth skill under this uh, social cooperation skills and what does this mean this mean that when child is given some free time because always child is not uh, engaged if you remember our social skill uh, categories there is there is uh, 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 occupation meaning child is engaged with something but when there is a free time then the timing or the or the activities or something that is given it is accepted by the child with without much difficulty how we have to inculcate this then child teach and create a free time in school for gardening i have taken one example so as teachers and the, the facilitator they can uh, take uh, multiple things if there is a free time for what happens the child has got engagements then child is having food then after food free time is given to the child so in this free time if something the school is trying to do for example in our case we have taken gardening gardening means child will take care of the trees then how to take care of the trees lot of things lot of it i am not going to discuss details but there are few things involved in taking care of trees and the child has to accept it easily and happily if those things are done by the child at this as a social skill improvement then anything that parents are going to do in the free time at home those will also be accepted by the child gracefully if the parents are saying that let's go uh, to do some kind of uh, activity in the free time child will not so resistance for that so that is a fantastic social cooperation skill and if the child will be having this nothing like that it is very very fantastic skill to have but in preschool we have to really work hard with the child having lots of activities lots of uh, structured way of functioning so that child will be learning these skills without much difficulty and believe me why this sensitive time is very important is only for this 
the way will make our child to behave child will be behaving that so it's not a big deal only thing is that our inadequate knowledge about the whole thing we are not able to get these things done in the preschool years but if some importance will be given for this then everything becomes very very easy then while we are doing and making sure this happens in the school will also check with parents in our monthly meeting that if the child is simply accept accepting various free time activities at home the way parents are defining these free time activities for the child it could be anything it could be going to a walk or doing a kind of craft at home or doing a some kind of uh, uh, taking the dog uh, to outside for a uh, you know walk so anything child must accept it without any resistance that is the skill we are talking about so maximum mechanism is there to ensure the skill can happen similar way we will have to evaluate if all the time child is just follows this uh, accepting this three time usage we will have to give three sometimes the child accepts we will have to give two rarely the child accepts it's one and all the time the child resist to accept this three time uh, the way it has been defined then we have to give zero then based on that our total score will come then total score will talk about this uh, at the end of these things so once this fourth skill is done we we'll have to go to the our next skill next skill is about child sits and listens when stories are being read this is one skill although some of the schools they follow this but uh, we must consciously bring this skill for the child it helps not only in terms of social cooperation skill but also in the attention span of the child so what we do as teachers and facilitators is that how much time does the child sits and listens in a particular story to a particular story that is being read out by the teacher or that is being told by the teacher to the children storytelling is itself is a very very uh, important skill for the teacher teacher has to master in that but for a benchmark system what we understand is that in a uh, in a play group we have to ensure a child at least sits and listens for 5 minutes and for nursery any story we are telling to the child child is listening for at least 10 minutes for lkg child is listening at least 15 minutes and in ukg child is sitting quietly and listening to the story told by the teacher at least for 20 minutes so that is the thing in our attention span we have already discussed this in our 5 uh, into n mechanism in in our cognitive skill development so to some way this is also connecting to that but this is also shows the child's social cooperation or listening to others listening skill is also getting improved in this preschool years so take a note of these things and while we are evaluating because evaluation and skill development goes side by side we cannot expect and evaluate without having those things done at the, our school or that is consciously being uh, provided by the teachers or parents for the child so in that case in the evaluation same uh, formula goes if the child uh, never Uh, sit and listens to a story we give uh, zero and if all the time every time we uh, ask the child to sit and listen to the story that is being told if the always the child jolly welly or uh, joyfully listens then we have to assign a score of 3 during our evaluation so this is the fifth skill under the social cooperation skill we have to remember and make sure this is given to a child in a preschool uh, environment going further then coming to the sixth skill sixth skill coming uh, is talking about the child cleans up his or her messes when asked because everything the child does whether it's a kind of uh, activity it's a play or anything that will create lot of mess around if it is a child is playing then there will be toys uh, will be going here and there if the clay and other things are there there are also be lot of messes will be created it's very very common that activities will create lot of mess but how to ensure that the child is following or cleans up everything as a part of the social skill that initiate a play and ensure that the child cleans up the place 
So any play method, any functional play we are just doing along with the kid, we ourselves cleaning the place will ensure, will instruct the child just clean it up. So child will be following it and child will be proactively doing that. And if the child does that, then that indicates the social cooperation skill in the child is very, very strong. And while we do these things, while we teach those things in the school, but we must check with our parents in our monthly meeting, the status of this kind of thing. And even if sometimes what happens, parents out of their sheer love for the child, they do clean everything at home. But if the parents are doing that in that way, as a teacher, we have to request them, the parents, that this is a social skill, they need to improve. That's, that's the reason parents must appreciate, parents must facilitate. The child should clear and clean all the messes that is created out of him, uh, anything. Even the parents that do something at home, either cutting vegetables or other things, then also if we can just ask the child to clean it up, that also uh, uh, can be done to improve the social uh, skilling of the child. It's very, very important. And we have to keep it in mind as well as inform parents to do the, those things with our child. Again, if we some point of time evaluate these things um, uh, some point of time, if child always does uh, this kind of uh, cleaning, then we have to give three. And if the child is never ever follows this and cleans up the messes, then we have to give a score of zero. And rest of the rarely and sometimes will carry the score of one and two. Yes, going further, uh, the seventh skill uh, under the social cooperation is that the child follows rules. So this uh, particular skill, most of the schools, they take care of. Uh, but uh, uh, some point of time we have to bring into our curriculum. We must bring that into all the skills I'm talking here is that some point of time it must be brought into our curriculum and syllabus. And how we'll be developing this skill in our preschool? that talk and teach the rules we must follow. So all the, if you look at divided kids uh, while being book, lot of uh, rules are there which needs to be followed. But apart from that, everything we cannot bring in the book. But this kind of uh, exercise currently, what we are just doing, that will give teachers sufficient understanding that what kind of other rules can be brought for the discussion with the child. It could be walk left side of the road is a rule we must follow that. Uh, huge footpath when you are just running on a busy road, that is a rule we must follow. That. Follow traffic signals, that's a rule we often teach our children in the preschool and we have to see if the child is following that. Respect elders is a rule we must follow, we have to check. Uh, other rules in the syllabus book, just check in the syllabus book. Lots of rules are there in the, in the syllabus that is um, uh, social book, so that can be taken care of. And when we teach those things, but it is equally important that those things have been uh, or collect, it's collected from the parents that whether the child is following those rules at home or not. So once that is done, then both parents and teachers, they're taking responsibility to understand if the child is following those rules or not. Then evaluation, any point of evaluation based on our understanding about the child's uh, understanding and following of the rules, we can provide the score from zero to three. If always child follows and have the awareness about the rules, we'll give three. Else, if the child is never follow, uh, never following a rule, then we have to give a score of zero. Okay, so going further, uh, we have to go to the, our next uh, uh, skill under the social cooperation skill. Then the eighth skill is talking about child shares, toys, and other belongings with others. So this skill, although all of the parents and the teachers, they are aware of, but as far as it comes to inculcate this skill in the child in the preschool years, it becomes a little bit of difficult task. So how we'll have to do? Again, we have to initiate a functional play that includes sharing your toys with others and teach the sharing. For example, we have any functional game we have to share just like you. we have to, each one will be asked to bring their, uh, you know, favorite toy and we have to identify a person with whom we can share this toy. And this functional game will 
able to teach the child the value of sharing so if this exercise this functions this game is done at preschool definitely child will learn sharing child will not be holding back to their own stop and not able to share anything or the belongings to others because in the preschool we have never initiate a functional game that requires this sharing so parents and teachers basically requesting to the teachers if you are involved in any any school then ensure that you are initiating a sharing game so this game can be anything based on our earlier this prime methodology you can initiate a functional game that includes sharing just do that and even if child is not having this particular skill after this game child will be 100% having the skill of sharing so that is very much possible five times the game will be done in any school any environment child will be learning this sharing it's not at all difficult but it has to be done within that sensitivity years if we are saying the child just share at, at, at the age of let's say 10 12 13 child will never do that because that's a habitual way of functioning that's happening for the child teachers have to give lot of importance on that and again we have to take the inputs from the parents in our monthly meeting saying that if the child is following that so based on this inputs and the learning that happens in the school that our evaluation can be done in same, same way if often very often child shares the belongings and toys to others then we have to give a score of 3 and the child never ever shares the toys and other belongings we have to give a score of 0 in between rarely and sometimes scores will be accordingly 1 and 2 please take a note of uh, all these things and under social cooperation we have to bring that into our curriculum and make sure we are we are having these things at school going further going to the ninth uh, skill under the social cooperation that talks about the child gives in or compromises with peers when appropriate making others comfortable is one of the very very big social cooperation skill but we know that it's a very very important task skill but we are not able to inculcate this skill in the child that that's why we are not able to make our child to behave that way which is social appropriate so initiate a play maybe music chair uh, Uh, which is a you know very uh, good functional game for this particular skill that includes fighting for a chair and teach giving in or compromising at that point of time as you know you can just have one chair and two children maybe you play music the way we follow music chair and when the music stops one child has to sit on that it is often visible and most of the times for one chair there will be fighting between these two who should sit on the chair even it happens in the adults forget about the children now if we do this particular functional game in the school and at this point of time we have to teach the child just compromise on that because your friend is becoming happy the moment you just leave it but once the fighting happens everybody wants you know they pull the chair and uh, you know if we don't intervene there if we don't teach our role as a teacher in preschool is absolutely at that point of time you have to teach them the compromising for the benefit of others for the happiness of others the moment others are happy we have to also so happy maybe this skill is connected to our the previous skill just uh, the the child's uh, control self even if there is a little bit of anger even if during teaching then the earlier skill will help the child to come to normal without much delay so everything is needed to each other and uh, while we do this kind of skilling among children it's so enriching for the teachers at the same time we are also take pride that we have taught this skill in the children in the preschool years that's what gives us a lot of joy as 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 teachers it's not only that you know we are just dealing with the uh, you know children in terms of mathematics and other skills these are most important skills and once we just do this we also feel lots of you know uh, feel good that yes because of me one child is you know uh, have got this kind of huge skill which is going to help the child uh, in the future and forever and similarly giving in and compromising those things must be checked with the parents in our monthly meeting and if that is not there 
the discussion with parents will help the parents understand the social cooperation skill and make sure that child is learning those things without much problem and similarly once we are just uh, evaluating this the uh, skill if child is always showing a pattern of giving and compromising for the benefit of others and that's a fantastic skill all of us are some point of time would like to acquire this skill but since our uh, uh, the the habitual way of uh, behavior even we are facing difficulty in inculcating this skill in ourselves but believe me if we have to do this for our kids it's very very easy so evaluation can be done accordingly then going uh, further to our next skill under the social cooperation this 10th skill what we need to improve in our child is, is that the child accept decisions made by the adults sometimes there are resistance but child has to accept it because all the adults who are providing some decisions they are very closely connected to the child now how we do this in 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 our uh, preschool years initiate again a functional play that's where the idea wired kids play module is so important always we have to say that if this is the skill we have to create a play as a functional play which can take care of this particular skill so initiate a play that includes changing decision from teachers and teach the accept the decision it may happen that we have to create a functional game meaning we have to create a game with certain rules or certain decisions and while the game is happening we may change the decision knowingly so that the child understand that and accepts it so this is also a functional game anything can be done which requires a change of decision in between so child understands and accept this as a social cooperation skill this is very easy it's not difficult only thing is that we have to keep it in mind the child accept without much resistance the decision that is given by the adults adults could be the teachers adults could be the parents at home so to know that whether the child is displaying such kind of social skill at home then we have to check with parents that whether the child is displaying this kind of skill at home or not based on that the evaluation has to be done again if parents and the teacher are saying always the child is a uh, displaying the skill of as, uh, accepting the decision made by the adults adults could be the grandparents adult could be the again in the in the park the children are playing one adult is coming and saying that uh, please don't jump on this so that is a decision given by the adult and some children they follow some children they don't follow if the some children they don't follow they are the children they become social their behavior will be little bit of rough and their social cooperation skills will be hugely affected negatively so if we can change those behavior at that point of time by inculcating this social skill then believe uh, me our children will be fantastic in in their uh, academic and in their future functional life itself then going back to our next skill 11th skill that talks about the child takes turns with toys and other play objects why this is so social cooperation because if you remember or you must come across if there are five children and there is one seesaw or one swing there may be children fighting who should go and you know grab that uh, swing or seesaw first so if children they are fighting then that is not a social cooperation skill and here the role of the primary teachers the pre primary teachers kindergarten teachers comes handy and that's why our role is valued otherwise we are not adding any value to the child's life so our role is that to ensure that the child takes turn that discipline that yes five children one swing each one will be having five five swings or two two minutes each one of them so no you know that as a teacher i can say you are fast second third fourth fifth so first roll turn is gone second turn is coming then third person is waiting let me have my turn then only i'll just go and you know have that fourth person like that should think that let me have my turn then i'll go and enjoy this if this skill is inculcated in the child in the preschool years during the sensitivity years then the child's behavior and social skill for social cooperation will be fantastic and this is not very very difficult only thing is that we have to aware 
this is a skill and based on that we have to create a functional game and we have to play this functional game with our child and we have to make sure the child understands that particular skill at that point of time in the game itself so easy it's not at all difficult so we have to teach the this kind of things to our uh, child in the preschool environment and ensure the child follows that so parents can also be informed and parents can also be checked during the monthly meeting that whether the child is displaying this kind of skill uh, either at park at home or elsewhere based on this inputs and our teachers assessment in the school then we have to evaluate it if the child always displays this uh, tom waiting for the tom and behaves accordingly we have to do three and accordingly if the child is following little bit not at all then 0 1 to score can be given now going further this 12th is the final skill under the social cooperation skill and this talks about the child responds appropriately when corrected this is a common thing that will be happening in child's life very often and from the preschool years to our corporate life to our job life we are often corrected by peers or by our seniors even by juniors when we resist that doesn't show a good social skill if we accept it responds that correctly appropriately then it is considered to be a good social cooperation skill and this skill has to be inculcated in the child in the preschool years then it will be lasting for a longer time in the child's life in the future so teach the child to understand when she or he is corrected in a given situation if we are saying that two children are fighting for a swing and we are just correcting one person don't uh, push the child we have to say that very very appropriately respond to that not react to that so responding and reacting is something we are teaching the that the students in the mba class in fact this is the skill must be taught in the preschool years not in the mba class because the chances of getting the skill is very very high in the preschool rather than the the, the students in the mba class so if the right way of behavior responding to a situation is taught then it becomes very easy and once it is taught in the school then it can be always checked with the parents in our mock meeting and based on the parents input we have to give the evaluation so evaluation if all the time child is uh, when the child is corrected child uh, shows acceptance in the face child is not resistance child next time is child is not following the similar mistake when it's corrected that means we as teachers are taking note that those things are taken care of it is not expected from the parents and parents are leaving their children to a preschool for these skills these are the expertise of the preschool teachers to ensure this can be inculcated in the child it's not the responsibility of the parents because they don't know we know and if we don't know everywhere it kids is there to bring all these things in a very very systematic way so that we can just ensure those things can be uh, adopted in a preschool environment so with this this 12 skills we are completing this and uh, the details of the evaluation uh, uh, is available in the reference and that can be also you can download those things and also if it's uh, having difficulty in downloading please write to us we'll be just make sure those evaluation sheet along with the interpretation and uh, uh, intervention can be provided to the schools without any difficulty so this is the end of this session uh, under our social skill development series and uh, next session we'll be discussing about the social interaction the way we have discussed about the social cooperation the next social skill next category of social skill will be dealing with social interaction and social interaction has got 11 skills where we can work with our child and we can also evaluate and measure them so that we know very systematically how we are going to develop the skills so until that time thank you very much for this and uh, we'll be looking forward to your uh, inputs to your feedback and uh, if you are facing any difficulty in implementing this particular social cooperation skill for your children either in your school or in your uh, uh, sector 
where you are contributing value for the uh, children having uh, the skill development in the pre primary school sector thank you so much and uh, we'll be looking forward to take care of the next session under the social skill development which will be dealing with social interaction thank you so much <laughs>